Hey guys, Jason here with Quantum Courses, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over how to upload your artwork, create listings, and publish products on the Redbubble print-on-demand platform. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so you'll get notified each time I release a new tutorial. Redbubble is considered one of the top print-on-demand platforms available today. Not only do they have an easy to use platform to create products, but also a marketplace with millions of customers looking for cool t-shirts, hoodies, and other products to purchase. In this video, I will walk you step by step through the entire process of uploading your artwork, adding your listing information such as your title, description, and your tags, and publishing your products to the Redbubble marketplace. But before you can create products on Redbubble, you'll first need an awesome design to add to your products. I've already created a design for my products using the Placeit t-shirt design maker. If you need a quick and easy way to create awesome designs for your products, check out the link in the video description below to access the Placeit t-shirt design maker. They have tons of pre-made design templates and thousands of images and graphics that you can use to create your Redbubble artwork. So now let's head over to Redbubble and go over how to upload your designs. If you haven't already, Make sure you sign up and create your Redbubble account, then go ahead and log into the site. Once you log in, go ahead and go up to the top menu and click on your account icon. From the drop down menu, you should see a button that says add new work. Go ahead and click that now. This will take you to a page where you can upload new artwork or copy an existing design that you've already created. If we take a look at the file requirements, we can see that it's recommended to use a high resolution JPEG, PNG, or GIF file with a minimum resolution of 1000 pixels. Although the minimum requirement is only 1000 pixels, I like to upload my designs with at least 3000 pixels to ensure good quality. So once you're ready, go ahead and click on Upload New Work to upload your design. You can then find your design and open it up. Your design should then start uploading and you'll be taken to a page where you can start creating your products and your product listing. Besides having a great design, one of the most important things to get found on Redbubble or any other marketplace is to have good product details. This includes having a good title and description that describes your design using good keywords and keyword phrases that customers are actually searching for. When creating a title for your design, make sure you're using your most relevant keywords. If my design contains text, I usually have the text in the title. So for this example, I'm just going to keep my title as Creator Lifestyle. On Redbubble, they also have a section where you can add tags to your product listing. Here's where you want to put your most relevant keywords and keyword phrases separated by commas. You also want to add a detailed description to your product listings. Here's where you can describe the key features of your design and add any relevant long tail keyword phrases. If you need more details on researching Redbubble tags and optimizing your title and description, check out the video I made on optimizing your listing tags and keywords by clicking the YouTube card at the top right of the screen. Or of course, you can find the video by just going over to my YouTube channel. So once you've created your title, added your tags, and made a good description, you can then scroll down and start creating your products. Redbubble has dozens of different products that you can add your design to to sell in your shop. To enable or disable a product type, simply use the button below the item here. All product types that you mark as disabled will be grayed out. When you enable a product, you'll see the full color. So the first thing you should do is scroll down and check out all the products on the page and see which ones you want to enable and which ones you want to disable. Some designs you create may not fit certain products. For instance, artwork designed for a t-shirt may not look as good as a sticker. You also want to keep your brand image in mind. If you're building a clothing store, you may not want to add laptop cases for example. Once you finish selecting your products, you can then scroll back up and go to the first product type that you have enabled. For my listing, that's going to be the standard print clothing. If you look underneath the name, you can see that many product types have multiple products that can be enabled. Standard print clothing has 12 products that can be enabled, including t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. So now let's edit our standard print clothing products. To do this, go ahead and click the edit button here. This will open up a new window where we can edit our first product in our standard print clothing. If you look at the drop down menu under style, you can see that we're currently editing the essential t-shirt. 
We can use this drop down menu to select the next standard print clothing item we want to edit once we finish this one. Below the style drop down menu, you'll see an option to add your design to the front of the shirt or to the back of the shirt. You can't add it to both on Redbubble, so go ahead and select one or the other. You can then preview all of the colors that are available for this particular product. When you select a color, it'll appear on your mock-up so you can see how it looks with your design. And now comes the most important part, which you not only have to do with every product type, but also every individual product, is to edit your design. This will include resizing your image and rearranging your image to fit the product. To resize your image, simply use the slider bar here. You can also move your design around on the product by simply clicking and dragging it to the correct location. When arranging your design on your product, make sure the design stays within the print area. You can also center your design vertically or horizontally using the buttons at the bottom here. There we go. I think this is a good size and location for my design. If you look in the toolbox, you can also see the minimum pixel size required for each product. They're all different, but as long as your design is at least 3000 pixels, you should be fine. When editing your product types, you can also update your product prices. To do this, let's look up at the top here and click on the second tab here on the toolbox. Here you can view all the items that are included in the standard print clothing product type. To add or remove a product, simply click the checkbox in the availability column. Once you select the products you want to sell, you can also adjust the price for each product by adjusting its markup percentage. Raising or lowering your markup percentage will adjust your artist's margin and change the product prices. If you look underneath the name of each product, you'll see the price that will be displayed with the markup percentage that you have selected. For example, if I raise my markup percentage for my t-shirts and hoodies from 20% to 25%, the new price will also be updated underneath the product title here. So take a moment and go through each product and select the ones you want to add to your shop and adjust your markup percentages to set your prices. Once you're finished, let's click back on the top tab to go back to our editing tools. So now that my design is the correct size and in the correct location on the Essential t-shirt, you can now click the drop down menu under style and adjust your design on every product that you have enabled for standard print clothing. Many people don't take the time to go through each product and adjust their designs. But if your goal is to build a legit store and a professional brand, you want your products to look professional as well. This may mean spending an extra 30 minutes to an hour going through each product to make sure your designs look perfect. So now that I've finished adjusting my design on all of the standard print clothing items, I can now go down and click on the apply changes button. Now that I've finished editing my standard print clothing product type, I can move on to the other product types that I have enabled such as the large print clothing and edit those products as well. Make sure you remember that some product types have multiple products which should be edited individually. Also, you might notice on some products the toolbar might look slightly different, but it should still have everything you need to edit your design on the product. So once you finish editing all of the product types that you have enabled and each individual product, we can now scroll down to the bottom of the page and select our publish settings. If you like, you can also select to add your design to other media such as photography, drawing, or digital art. In the next section here, you can select to add your new design to one of your Redbubble collections. Collections are products that you group together based on a certain criteria such as a niche or topic. Using collections is a great way to organize the products in your store. If you need help creating collections for your store, click the YouTube card at the top right of the screen here or head over to my YouTube channel to check out my tutorial walking you through the entire process. So for my design, I think I'll add it to my Life Designs collection. In the next section here, you can select the default product you want your design to be displayed on in your shop. If you click the drop down menu here, you can see all the products that you currently have enabled. Simply select the one you wish to be displayed. For my products, I usually keep this on optimized, which means Redbubble will show a mix of the products based on the sales and the individual customer's interest. In the next section here, you can select to make your design public where anybody can view it or private where only you can view it. If you're planning to actually sell products, you're going to want to make this public. You can then select whether your design contains mature content or not. I think my design's pretty safe, so I'm going to select no. 
And finally, make sure you click the checkbox here to confirm you have the rights to sell your artwork. So now that we've uploaded our design, added our product details, edited each individual product, and selected our publish settings, we can now go down to the bottom and click on Save Work. Your new work should then start processing, and once it's complete, your products will then be published to the Redbubble Marketplace. Once your design is published, it may take up to 15 minutes for it to appear in the search results. If you scroll down the page here, you can preview all the products that you just created with your new design. If you took the time to adjust your design on each item, all of your products should look perfect. So as an example, let's click on the active t-shirt here and check out my new product listing. Not bad, I think this looks pretty good. Now that my new design and products have been published, I can now share the link to my listing page with my audience and promote my design on social media. So that's a quick overview of how to upload designs and create products on the Redbubble Marketplace. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.